backup. I repeat, do you need backup? Negative. Keep the evacuation going. Copy that.
Another week passed since the OCP's magnificent giant has fallen. OCP's new CEO assured us that the destruction of its headquarters will not stand in the way of finishing Delta City. Japanese corporation Kanemitsu has already shown interest in OCP's most prominent project. We at Media Break welcome them with open arms. Delta City, Yokoso! 
from the City of Wonders, we're back to Detroit. The city's debt has reached a new peak. Re-elected Mayor Kuzak, asked about his plans for reform, said he had other plans instead. OCP is the weakest it's ever been. We'll sue them even if we need a Japanese lawyer, he assures us. Now it's time to introduce a new segment, You the Detroiters, where we share feel-good stories from our local communities. An escaped python terrorizing the local neighborhood has been reunited with its owners. But that wasn't the only thing that was returned. X-ray of the reptile's insides has shown the stolen watches together with the remains of the thief himself. Pickles, a local addict, was so intoxicated with Nuke that the drug was absorbed by the python, which explains its bizarre behavior. Isn't that food for thought? Next up, Sunblock 5000 model nearly torn to pieces by an ED-209 after not adhering to the 209's instructions. The dispute over a parking space could have turned deadly if it wasn't for Dr. Olivia Blanche, a seasoned psychologist who managed to keep a cool head during the 209's intervention. Dr. Blanche's new book, Coping with Loss, is said to be of value to both people and machines alike. Soon on Channel 9, the Samantha Ortiz you didn't know. After recanting her unfounded accusations against OCP, our brave reporter ends her fieldwork and becomes Channel 9's newest morning show host. Her first guest? A woman with the world's biggest hands. Welcome back, Samantha. A new world record has been set in Detroit. A man called Funeral Bob attended his thousandth funeral this year. The record-breaking funeral belonged to Max Becker, a former OCP executive. As it turned out, Bob was its only attendee. The OCP delegation did not arrive due to a rescheduled business meeting. We hope the meeting went well. And now from hero to zero. A corporate employee saved the life of a policeman in the Holy Cow restaurant, but he did not do it for free. While performing the abdominal thrusts, Ulysses Washington stole the officer's badge. Caught red-handed, Washington claimed that the badge once belonged to him. Committing crimes while aspiring to be a cop, we've heard it all. One question still remains unanswered. What happens to Robocop's human status? Mayor Kuzak distances himself from Robocop and leaves no doubt that he will not be advocating for granting him human rights. Robocop's efforts have prompted a public conversation. I saw on TV that it suffers from some kind of malfunction. What if he mistakes us for criminals or something? Who's gonna defend us from him? I thought you were with us, Robo. Human rights for a robot. <laughs> What's next, refrigerators? It's been a busy time for Detroit, but the cloud that lowers over the city is lifting as police end their strike. We're ready to serve, said Officer Ann Lewis, who returned to duty despite her recent injury. What heroism. Detroit can sleep soundly tonight. The question is, for how long? That's all for today. This was Casey Wong. Until next time.